Welcome back once again. Now that we created our game servlet, let's test and tweak the application for the Guessing Game Servlet Edition. Recall that this application will have three main components. For our welcome page, we'll have an index.jsp. This will show up with a form that allows a player to add a guess between the number 0 and 1000. When the guess is entered and the player hits the Submit button, our next component, the Game Servlet, will fire up and start to run the game. It will compare the results and then show the appropriate view depending on the results. If the target has been guessed, we'll see a message indicating that along with a link back to play again. If the guess is incorrect, we will then see a form that lets us guess again and a message telling us which direction to guess in. The third component of our application is the GameNumber.java class which we're using to hold our numbers that we're using in the game. The third component of our application is our game number Java class, which we're using to represent each of the numbers in our game. The primary reason it's needed in this exercise is to show us how we may connect simple Java classes with our servlets and JSPs. Let's review once again what we do inside the servlet. Once the user enters a guess and submits the form, we get to the servlet. In the doPost method, if the method was a post, it will run this method. If the request method was a get, it will run the doGet method, and we have simply redirected that to the doPost method. So either a get or a post, in our case, will go to the post method. In doPost, we get the input data, we parse them all into integers, and then we create game numbers with them. Then we process the guesses, we determine if their guess was equal to the target or not equal. And if it's not equal, we set the message appropriately and increment the number of guesses. Then finally, we generated the view. Here we had to create a print writer that would write to our output object, namely the response object. And then we used a bunch of out.print lines to print the response. And since we're sending this view to a browser, we had to include HTML along with the results of our Java processing. And as you can see, we've basically been able to mix using that out.print line HTML into what is ostensibly a Java class, the servlet. Now I think it's time to run it and see how well it does. I generally like to first build my project, then I select run as and run it on the server. Make sure the appropriate server is selected if necessary, J2EE preview in my case. Hit next, make sure that the thing that's configured is our guessing game application and hit finish. After a moment, my browser should pop up on the screen with the guess form. And so we see that. I'm going to guess 500, as any rational person would, and I could see that I guessed too high. This time I'm using a get, so I see that the guess was 500, but I can also look through here and see that the target was 202. So yeah, 500 guess should be too high. I should guess lower, and guess number 2. Everything looks A-OK -okay now. Let's guess lower to see if we get guess number three and too low. Notice there's an error. Language number format exception for input string zero slash. What would be zero in this case? Probably the minimum value would be a zero. An input string as a zero slash. Where would this number format exception occur? If I follow the stack trace down, I see we're somewhere in the game servlet in do post and we do a few parse ints and it's the second parse int throws an exception. So let's have a look. Second parse int an exception. Doesn't look bad here. Everything looks A-OK -okay in terms of the code, but where is it getting this request.get parameter? The first guess went fine, if you'll recall. It was actually on the second guess where we have a problem what was generating the minimum form tag for that second guess? Well, it was this same servlet. So let's look down here in this code. Ah, I see the problem. Value equals min value. That should be OK, but notice right after the min get value, we add that slash. So what's happening is it thinks that whatever the min value is, the slash is part of it. We can fix this one easily by just putting a space after the quote so that value equals will be known. 
Another way to fix it is to put a single quote before those double quotes and a single quote after. When this is concatenated, it'll see value equals single quote zero single quote and then it'll also set off what the value is. So let's do that to fix all of those. Incidentally, the space would have been enough to fix this. I'm adding the single quote just to be thorough. And I need to do it for all of those values or we're going to end up with another error message. A couple things I like to do. Let's go back to Firefox and shut that down. Oh, one thing I didn't mention. A 500 error generally means something happened in your code, as a 404 means something cannot be found. We may see any of those as we're running web applications. To make sure I'm running under a clean version of my application, I'm going to delete this server object. It's okay to delete it if the only thing you're running is your current application. If it's running other things that are important to keep running, you don't want to do that. And let's run it again. Build the project the new project, run as on server, Hit finish to run, back to what I had before, let's guess 500, could be guess 2, too low this time, target is 936, so let's guess 950 to go too high. Recall this is where we had our problem last time, let's see if this works should say too high and guess number three. Ah, looks good. What is this? No guess here. Because on the servlet we used to do post or a post request. What was that target again? Remember we're saving it hidden values so I can view the page source. 936. All right, 30 should be too low. 940 should be too high. Let's see now, if I put in 936, I should have it right in five guesses. Congratulations, you got it in five guesses. Oh, another problem, I'm not seeing my hyperlink. Let's view source to see if it's showing up there. Uh, it does show the hyperlink. Oh, what's happening? What are we missing from our HTML page when we get it correct? Notice there's no end of body tag or ending HTML tag. So we need to fix that. I'll click Firefox, get back in Eclipse, double click here. Oh, it makes sense. We can do this a couple ways. Inside our else statement, we included those body tags. In the true part of the if, we did not. We could copy and paste them there, or we could recognize that we want to use those regardless of being inside that if structure, so might as well use them once to save time and pull them out of the if statement. They'll show up regardless of what we put in the middle there. I think this is going to get it. Let's delete our server, try it one more time. Project, run as on server, next finish, Five hundred. I can see the target is 719. Let's go to 750. This should be my second guess. Too high. 700. Should be too low for guess 3. Guess 4. 719. Should be just right. One other error, finally. I'm missing a single quote in my H reference. Going back to fix that real quick. Final test. Mainly debugging requires patience. An eye for detail. And sometimes perseverance. But the nice things about computer code, eventually you can get it correct. You can keep testing until you get it right. Too low gets higher this time. Not too high. It's 527. Double 
again. Looks like we're good to go. There's one final thing we'll need to look at and we'll save that for the next video. And that is to have a look at the deployment descriptor for this application. This has been a Piercy production.